on the evening of April the 15th of 2023. Kaylin Gillis was one of three passengers in a Ford Explorer driven by her boyfriend, Blake Walsh, as they were looking for the address of a party in Hebron, about 50 miles north of Albany, New York. The Ford and another vehicle carrying four of Gillis's friends pulled into the wrong driveway at around 10 p.m. The group didn't have cell phone service in the area to assist them in finding the right house, but upon realizing their mistake, they were preparing to leave. Without warning or provocation, 65-year-old homeowner Kevin Monaghan then opened fire on them with a 20-gauge shotgun. Gillis was in the last vehicle to back away and she was struck in the neck. The gunshot left her in critical condition. Walsh drove to the nearby town of Salem, where the group found cell phone service and called 911. Unfortunately, Gillis succumbed to her injuries before she could receive medical help. Police and state troopers went to Monaghan's home in the aftermath, and he surrendered following an hour-long standoff. His interaction with the arresting officers was captured on body cam footage. As indicated by papers filed in Washington County Court, Monaghan claimed to have been in bed since 8.30 p.m., and he suggested hunters had been responsible for the shooting. The Salem-born man had no criminal record in New York, but he was described by his neighbors as hostile and aggressive. The day after the shooting, he pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder. Updates on the matter indicated that his charge was reduced to reckless, depraved, indifference murder and that his trial was set to begin on January the 8th of 2024. Number 6. Ralph Yarl Teenager Ralph Yarl was sent to pick up his younger siblings from an address in the 1100 block of Northeast 115th Terrace in Kansas City, Missouri on April the 13th of 2023. Yarl mistakenly rang the doorbell at a home less than a block away shortly before 10 p.m. 84-year-old Andrew Daniel Lester didn't answer and instead shot the teenager twice through his front door glass. Yarl was left in serious condition after suffering gunshot wounds to his head and arm. The staggering teen sought help at three different houses before someone finally agreed to offer him some assistance. The police found him bleeding from his wounds while lying in the street. Yarl survived in a GoFundMe created by a family member to help with his medical bills, showed him convalescent on a hospital bed. Donations had reached nearly $3.5 million by May the 4th. Yarl was described as academically and musically gifted, being one of the best clarinet players in Missouri. He was part of his high school's Technology Student Association and Science Olympia team and had recently been characterized as a strong candidate by the Yale Undergraduate Admissions Board. Lester told the police that he believed Yarl was trying to break into his house, claiming that he was scared to death by the teen's size. At the time of the shooting, Yarl weighed 140 pounds on a 5 foot 8 inch frame. The incident made headlines across the US and was followed by a rally during which members of the community and Yarl's family protested in front of Lester's home. One of the signs they held read, this was not an error, and there was a permeating suspicion that the shooting had been motivated by racial hatred. By that point, official charges had yet to have been filed against Lester. Celebrities such as Kim Kardashian, Gwyneth Paltrow, Viola Davis and Justin Timberlake also voiced their outrage over the shooting. After Yarl was discharged from the hospital on April the 16th, his mother was called by President Joe Biden, who asked about the teen's recovery. The shooting was reported to have left him battling PTSD, intense migraines and balance issues. Lester was charged with first-degree assault, armed criminal action. As the legal proceedings into the matter unfolded, assistant prosecuting attorney Alexander Higginbotham clarified that there is not a racial element to the legal charges that were filed. As of January 2024, Lester had pleaded not guilty and requested a jury trial with a date set for October. Number 5. Incident in Brooklyn on the evening of June the 28th of 2021, an unidentified 35-year-old woman was walking in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn, New York City. While she was southbound on Morgan Avenue, CCTV captured a man following her. He had a face mask under his chin while clad in a black t-shirt, green camouflage pants and black sneakers. He continued to trail the woman as she turned to head westbound on Stag Street. Surveillance cameras caught the man as he then charged the woman from behind and jumped on her back. The attacker, who was 
considerably smaller than his victim, brought her to the ground and pinned her down. He then reached down her shorts and forcibly grabbed her buttocks. As the victim started struggling, the assailant fled. The woman refused medical attention and wasn't reported to have been physically hurt in the incident. The attacker's identity wasn't made immediately known and Crime Stoppers posted the surveillance video asking for the public's help in identifying him. He was described as Hispanic with black hair, standing at about 5 foot 5 and weighing roughly 165 pounds. Number 4. Taylor a 30-year-old woman only identified in the media as Taylor was jogging through the upscale Hyde Park neighborhood in Tampa, Florida in May of 2023. Taylor had her headphones on when she noticed a woman who'd slowed her car down next to her and who was desperately gesturing for her to run. In the moments that followed, Taylor saw a large man identified in an arrest report as Isha Beelzebub, Nadopa, coming after her. Nadopa quickly caught up with Taylor, dragged her to the ground by her ponytail, and began punching her in the face. He reportedly laughed as he assaulted the woman. Charles McKeon, a Tampa attorney who was out having a meal with his family, saw what was happening and later described the situation as Nadopa just wailing on the victim. McKeon fired a shot from his pistol, for which he had a concealed carry permit. Nadopa wasn't struck by the gunfire, and in the moments that followed, turned his attention on McKeon. He struck the man in the face, causing him to fall backwards and non-fatally hit his head on the sidewalk. McKeon's son, Dalton, then rushed to the scene, prompting Nadopa to flee the area. Taylor suffered a broken nose, a concussion, bruises, and abrasions. She spoke to WFLA in the aftermath with her face still bearing markings from the attack. Regarding the heroic intervention of the McKeons, Taylor lauded their selfless actions towards which she felt speechless and overwhelmingly grateful. Nadopa, of no fixed address at the time, was arrested shortly after the attack and charged with aggravated battery with great bodily harm. He told the authorities that his middle name was Beelzebub, a demon in Abrahamic religions and an alternative name for Satan in Christian tradition. The piercing steer that Nadopa displayed in his mugshot offered a slight glimpse into his deranged state of mind. Taylor would also tell the media, I have never seen a demon like I saw in that man. Nadopa's real name, however, was Michael Samdas. He was a man with a history of mental illness who'd disappeared from his home in Canada in September of 2019. The 44-year-old had abandoned his family and job, leaving without his car, laptop, or cell phone. There was no activity on his bank account, and for years his family had been looking for him, offering a reward of $25,000 for information. Prior to leaving his home, Sam Das was known to talk to himself and have violent outbursts towards family members in what loved ones described as Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde-like situation. Number 3. Alex Mixon on March the 1st of 2019, a driver in Phoenix, Arizona was shot dead by another while they were both stopped at a red light. 26-year-old Alex Mixon was in a Dodge pickup heading west on Thunderbird Road near 30th Street. He encountered 30-year-old Nicholas Elliott who, without warning or any obvious provocation, brandished a firearm and shot him in the chest. Phoenix police subsequently determined that Elliot had opened fire on Mixon for the simple fact that the latter had looked in his direction. After Mixon was shot, his truck left the roadway, clipped a power pole and went through a wall. He later succumbed to the gunshot wound in a hospital. The police initially believed he'd died in a single car crash before an autopsy revealed he'd been shot, and detectives thus started investigating the incident as a homicide. They identified Elliot as a suspect in July following an anonymous tip. He'd reportedly been overheard boasting about shooting someone in the face at an intersection for giving him a dirty look. Elliot was arrested on September the 26th of 2019. He was interviewed by detectives and reportedly admitted that he'd been involved in an argument at a red light, but claimed he didn't remember if he'd fired his gun. However, witness testimonies, including from people to whom he'd boasted about the crime, pointed to him as the shooter. He was arrested on charges of first-degree murder, aggravated assault, misconduct involving weapons, and drug possession. Elliot was reported to have told the police that if he could go back in time, he would take the incident back. 
today's topic was requested by Wombo Rails. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Aisha Waris On the night of February the 26th of 2023, English woman Aisha Waris was returning home in Harleston in the northwestern London borough of Brent. Waris was walking along Minute Avenue when 22-year-old Afghan immigrant Gulwali Stanikze intentionally rode his bicycle into her. He then repeatedly punched the woman who he'd never met before in the head and shoulders. The attack went on for about a minute before Waris was able to break free. Stanek Zay went after her and struck her again, forcing the young woman to cover her face. To escape her crazed attacker, 23-year-old Waris ran towards the home of neighbor Richard Jarman. She approached the house pursued by Stanis K. She pleaded with him to stop hurting her but was ignored as the man attacked her a third time. Jarman and Waris eventually went into the former's home and locked the door behind them. Jarman then told Stanek Zay, you're on camera, referring to his doorbell surveillance system. Seemingly undeterred by that aspect, Stanek Zay took his anger out on a Toyota Prius parked in the street, causing several thousand pounds worth of damage. Stanek Zay was then captured by Jarman's doorbell camera, delivering a number of running kicks into the door. He proceeded to use his bike lock to smash a glass pane on the door and then the camera. In the meantime, Waris had spoken on the phone to a friend who contacted her father, Abdullah Khan. The latter, accompanied by his other daughter, drove to the address and confronted Stanek Zay outside. Security footage captured Stanek Zay attacking Khan as well. He punched the man several times and dragged him through the road before ultimately fleeing the premises. Khan and Waris survived their respective assaults. The former was left with a black eye and a broken tooth while his daughter suffered a bruised lip and a swollen nose as well as bruising to her chest, shoulders and face. While her injuries were mostly external, Waris struggled afterwards with the psychological and emotional ramifications of the attack, including her being too scared and worried to leave the house. Stanek Zay had arrived in the UK from Afghanistan as a teenager, alone. In 2016, he'd been in and out of immigration centers and was homeless at the time of the attack. He pleaded guilty to two counts of assault and two counts of criminal damage in May of 2023, for which he was jailed for three years. If these unprovoked attacks aren't freaky enough for you, then dive right into when being a postal worker goes wrong, coming up right after number one. Number one, Ethan Hagler. In July of 2020, Ethan Hagler recorded himself dancing on the sidewalk in downtown Cape Girardeau, Missouri. As Hagler was practicing his moves near the intersection of Main Street and Independence Street, his dance teacher, Michael Curry, was sitting next to a speaker from which music was playing. A black SUV then pulled up nearby and 28-year-old Cedric Charles Moore got out from the passenger seat. He moved towards the young dancer in a manner that gave off the impression he was about to dance as well. Curry saw him swinging his arms about as Hagler continued dancing oblivious to his presence. Moore then suddenly pulled back a right arm and launched a thunderous punch to the side of Hagler's face. The strike dropped Hagler and Curry immediately chased after his attacker. Moore rushed back inside the waiting SUV. Dubstep music kept playing from the speaker as the dazed Hagler rose to his feet, clutching his face as Curry and bystanders tended to him. Footage of the vicious attack went viral, causing outrage among numerous netizens. Facebook Good Samaritans raised nearly $17,000 for the Fingerprint Dance Studio, where Hagler danced, and to cover any medical expenses that have resulted from the assault. The victim was released after being taken to the hospital with a bloody nose and a minor concussion on May the 10th of 2021. Moore, who'd attacked Hagler without any provocation, pleaded guilty to second-degree assault. Later in the month, he was sentenced to seven years in prison. Number 8. Deshaun Stewart On December the 23rd of 2017, Deshaun Stewart, aged 24, was scheduled to walk his mail route in Columbus, Ohio. At the time, he was pending dismissal from his job with the U.S. Postal Service. Instead of doing his rounds, he went to see his supervisor, 52-year-old Lance Dempsey, at an office in suburban Dublin. Stewart was reportedly naked when he approached Dempsey in the sorting bay. 
and shot him with a handgun. The postal worker then drove to Ginger Ballard's apartment complex at Bowling Place. The 53-year-old woman was believed to have also been involved in Stewart's pending dismissal, particularly with investigating him under suspicions of misconduct. At around 7.15 a.m., police received a call about an attacker with a gun chasing a woman outside the apartment complex. When officers arrived at the scene, they arrested Stewart and recovered a handgun he'd thrown while trying to run away. Ballard's lifeless body was found lying between two vehicles. The ensuing investigation found the woman had died instantly from blunt force trauma to the head after being thrown to the ground. In May 2018, Stewart was indicted on federal charges with two counts of murdering an officer of the United States. Investigators determined the attack to have been carried out in retaliation for the pending termination of his employment. Although he could have been put to death, Stewart was found not guilty in September of 2019 after multiple mental health experts determined he'd suffered manic and psychotic episodes at the time of the crimes. Upon being arrested, the postal worker had allegedly told officers that God had told him to kill his supervisors. According to documents, he also spat out two pieces of Ballard's jewelry, claiming they were being used to suck out his soul. Number 7. Adrian Jackson On December the 28th of 2019, postal worker Adrian Jackson, aged 30, was delivering mail on Cedardale Street in Houston, Texas, when he was randomly shot by a man driving a black Honda. His attacker, a Caucasian male later described by witnesses as having tattoos on his face, neck and arms, fled the scene, only to attempt to shoot another man at a nearby gas station minutes later. His gun misfired so he fled once more and rear-ended a woman's car while making his escape. In the shooting's immediate aftermath, Jackson screamed for help and was taken to a local hospital, where doctors found bullet wounds to his back and lower abdomen. His condition was later pronounced as stable. Jackson's attacker was later tracked by a photo a witness had taken of his car and identified as 24-year-old Matthew Williams. He was charged with aggravated assault against a public servant, aggravated assault with a lethal weapon, burglary of a motor vehicle, breach of a protective order, and attack of a federal employee. Investigators also found that Williams was a member of the Aryan Brotherhood gang, but it was unclear how his criminal connections had factored into his rampage. It was also reported that he was under the influence of drugs at the time of the shooting. Number 6. Jason Schaefer 33-year-old Jason Schaefer was shot dead on October the 13th of 2021 while delivering mail on his daily route in Longmont, Colorado. Witnesses reported to have seen a person wearing a dark hoodie and a blue mask flee in the area. The emergency services were called and Schaefer was pronounced dead. When the postmaster arrived at the scene, he reportedly asked if the shooter could have been Schaefer's former partner and mother of his children, 26-year-old Devon Schreiner. The two had worked together at the post office, but Schreiner's employment had been terminated roughly two weeks before the shooting after an unspecified incident between them. They'd also been involved in a custody battle for their two children, and investigators found that Schreiner had threatened Schaefer in the past. On the night of the attack, police arrested a 26-year-old woman on suspicion of first-degree murder. Schreiner appeared in court on October the 19th, where it was revealed she'd been plotting the shooting along with 34-year-old federal prison employee Andrew Ritchie. At first, the woman denied the existence of a romantic relationship with Ritchie, but later admitted they'd been seeing each other in light of telling evidence that had surfaced in the trial. Ritchie was charged as an accomplice and told detectives he'd tried to convince Schreiner on multiple occasions to not go through with the plan. However, on the morning of October the 13th, as he was dropping her off at her new job, Schreiner allegedly told him that today is the day GPS from both of their phones and cameras from houses in the vicinity showed that Ritchie's vehicle had followed Schaefer's along his delivery route. Police also uncovered a 1911 handgun in the console of the man's car. The alleged killer's trials are currently ongoing and each face lengthy prison sentences if convicted. Number 5. Robert Rochester Robert Rochester was doing his usual rounds on his Stanton, Delaware collection route on October the 11th of 2012 when a German Shepherd escaped its owner's property, ran towards him and started biting into his body. The dog mauled Rochester's legs, arm and stomach before being dragged off him by a passing motorist. She then pulled the postal worker into her vehicle and took him to the hospital. The German Shepherd went on to attack a smaller canine as it was being walked by its owner and the police were consequently called. When a trooper arrived at the scene, he fired his service weapon three times, injuring the aggressive animal. 
The German Shepherd survived and was placed in quarantine at a veterinary clinic. To determine if it had rabies or another condition to explain this violent behavior, 55-year-old Rochester was kept overnight in the hospital for treatment and released the following day. A week later, on October the 18th, he went into cardiac arrest at his home in Newcastle and was rushed to the hospital. Doctors were unable to save him and he was declared dead at around 2 a.m. Rochester's death certificate listed his cause of death as pulmonary embolism and temporary disability due to work injuries stemming from the dog attack. Number 4. Graham Bennett On July the 15th of 2013, due to a shortage in staff at the Royal Mail in Lincoln, England, 47-year-old Graham Bennett had to go out and make postal deliveries, despite his job being in the sorting office. His managers assigned him to delivery that day as one of his colleagues was having some time off. Temperatures in the area had risen to 81 degrees Fahrenheit while Bennett was out working the route. He was about halfway through his deliveries when he stopped to rest in the shade, next to a block of flats. Residents subsequently found him killed over in a small patch of shade by the entrance and tried to resuscitate him while calling the emergency services. Paramedics took Bennett to the hospital, but he died a short time later from a reported heat-related health issue. Number 3. Graham Ellison In September 2019, Royal Mail postman Graham Ellison, aged 59, was driving his Peugeot van in Cumbria, England, along the A683. He was going to collect mail from a post box when he encountered a horse and carriage. He slowly overtook it, but instead of going back in his lane, Ellison remained on the wrong lane as he approached a blind bend. With the intention of pulling into a lay-by, 27-year-old Oliver Evans, a police officer off-duty, was traveling on his motorbike and came around the blind bend in the direct path of Ellison's van. He tried braking but was unable to avoid the collision. Evans was thrown off his bike and suffered severe head and spine injuries. Several passers-by and even Ellison himself made efforts to save him but paramedics pronounced him dead at the scene. In court, the former postman admitted to causing death by careless driving and was jailed for 32 weeks in June 2021. He was to be banned from driving for two years upon his release. Number 2. Grant Gallagher In April of 2006, 41-year-old Oregon letter carrier Grant Gallagher heard about his supervisor's decision to add extra mail to his delivery route. He had been working on a new mail route for three weeks and he'd reportedly felt pressured by a week-long scrutiny of his work to which his supervisors had subjected him. On April the 4th, he was allegedly ahead of schedule when his supervisor assigned him more mail to deliver. Enraged by this development, he went to the Baker City Post looking for the postmaster, Michael Maguire. On his way, he encountered his supervisor, 49-year-old Laurie Hayes Cotter, in the parking lot. He repeatedly ran her over with his postal vehicle, seriously injuring her. Gallagher then got out of his car holding a 357 Magnum revolver and entered the building looking for Maguire. When he couldn't find him, he returned to the parking lot and shot Hayes Cotter several times, killing her. In a visible frenzy, he also fired rounds at her car, according to a witness, and then threw his gun towards a river nearby. A police officer arrived immediately after the shooting and Gallagher walked up to him and surrendered. He was arrested and charged with the intentional murder of Laurie Hayes Cotter and the attempted, aggravated murder of the postmaster. In July of 2006, Gallagher pleaded guilty and was sentenced to at least 35 years in prison. Number 1. Louis Vignone on October the 7th of 2021, while on his rounds along Columbia Avenue in Davenport, Iowa, 58-year-old Louis Vignoni was shot dead. The gunman was his former neighbor, 53-year-old Eric Quartz, who later confessed to the killing. He'd driven up and stopped his car in front of Vignoni's USPS vehicle to block him. Quartz then got out of his car and proceeded to shoot at the postal worker several times. After Vignoni had collapsed to the ground, Quartz dropped the murder weapon, entered his vehicle, and drove to the Carnegie Borough Police Department where he surrendered to the authorities. A contractor working on a house nearby had heard the gunshots and rushed to help Vignoni, but to no avail. He was declared dead at the scene after sustaining multiple gun wounds, including some to his head. In his confession, Quartz told the police he and Vignoni used to be neighbors in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and that he believed the postman had poisoned him and his family with cyanide when they lived close to each other. Another neighbor of theirs stated courts had told them something big was going to happen and that the whole city would hear about it. After appearing in court virtually, courts faced charges of killing a federal employee for which he could ultimately be given 
the death penalty. Thanks for watching. Would you rather slap your mother in law for $100 or let her soccer kick you in the head for a thousand? Let us know in the comments section below.